Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Columbia State Historic Park. I'm going to give everybody about a minute or so to hop on in. So just hang tight. Good morning again, everybody, and welcome to Columbia State Historic Park. My name is Caleb Mascalier, and I work for California State Parks, like it says right here on my patch. And today we're going to explore a little bit about the California Gold Rush. We're going to explore how our gold miners got here during the Gold Rush. 300,000 people came from all over the world. And they all came with the same idea. They made the long journey to California, hoping that they could find gold, that they could strike it rich quick and take their newfound wealth home to their family. And the way that we're gonna explore the gold rush today is with something that I like to call the Go West Challenge. That's where y'all are gonna pretend to be these gold miners who are gonna be journeying out to California. And there's a few things that we have to do before we jump into this little challenge here. And that first thing is, I wanna make sure that everybody has something to write with and something to write on. So you'll need a piece of paper and a pencil or a dry erase board and a marker. And I will give everybody, oh, about a minute or so to, Go ahead and grab all that. We are about halfway there, friends. 30 more seconds to get something to write with and something to write on. Almost done. 15 more seconds. And five, four, three, two, and one. All right, so hopefully we did the first step. And what I wanna do now is I'm gonna flip my camera around real quick because I kinda wanna show y'all where I'm at here in Columbia. And we are still a real town. We never became a ghost town. We have about 2,000 people that live here today but it's a little early in the morning, so you may not see too many people walking around. And it's probably about, oh, 36 degrees here this morning, so it's a little chilly. And what I'm gonna do now is share my screen. And when I share my screen today, it turns sideways a little bit because I'm on an iPhone. And I'm gonna show y'all on a map where I am in the state of California. So I'm this little blue dot in the little town of Columbia, California. We are nestled in the foothills of the Sierra Nevada mountains and the foothills are where our gold miners rushed to starting in 1848, hoping they could strike it rich. And we're gonna zoom out now. So you get an idea of where Columbia is in the state of California. And here we have two bigger cities, Modesto and Stockton. 
And then now we can see Sacramento and San Francisco. I am about an hour and 45 minutes south and a little east of Sacramento and about three hours east of the city of San Francisco. And if I zoom out some more, we can see the city now of Los Angeles and San Diego. And from San Diego, I am about eight hours north. I'm just going to keep zooming out so you get an idea of where we are in the United States of America there. All right. What we're going to do now is complete three quick steps, and then we can start our challenge. And this first step that we need to do, since we're going to pretend to be gold miners, we need to pick names for our gold miners. But I don't want you to pick just any name. I want you to think of a name you believe someone would have had in the year 1850. That's two years under the gold rush and the year the town of Columbia was discovered. And when you pick your name, it can be just a first name if you would like, or a first and a last name. I'll leave that up to you. And if you can't think of a name, you can use your own name if you would like to. But I wanna give you two examples of names that people had here in Colombia during the gold rush. So one of the ladies that used to live here in Colombia, her name was Maria Dagner. And one of the men that lived here in Colombia during the gold rush, his name was Dr. Thaddeus Hildreth. So those are just some examples. I'm gonna give you all 20 seconds now to think of your gold miner name, and then I want you to write it down. And five, four, three, two, and one. So what I'd like you to do now is you can turn to a friend there that you're sitting next to, and you can quietly tell them what your gold miner name is. All right, friends, I'm going to tell you about this next step. Because for this step, you're going to get 60 seconds, a whole minute. And what you'll be doing, since we're pretending to be gold miners and we're making characters, I want you to draw a picture of your gold miner. But wait just a second before you start. I want you to think about what your gold miner is going to be wearing. Are they going to be wearing a hat like I am? It can help keep the sun off your face in the summertime. Or maybe because it was a little chilly this morning. You want to be wearing a jacket or maybe a vest. Maybe your gold miner is holding a pickaxe or even a shovel. You could be holding a gold pan. I'll leave that up to you. And I'm going to give you all a whole minute, 60 seconds, to draw a quick picture of your gold miner. And that 60 seconds starts now. We are halfway there, friends. 30 more seconds. Almost done. 15 more seconds. And five, four, three, two, and one. All right, since you already told your friend what your gold miner's name, if you would like to, you can quickly and quietly show your friend there the gold miner that you drew. I'll give you all a few seconds to do that. All right, friends, it's now time for the last step 
and then we can officially start this challenge. And the last step is everybody gets to start my challenge with 10 points. So somewhere on your paper or your board, you can write the number 10, or you can do 10 little hash marks. That's because I'm gonna give you all five different challenges over the next 40 minutes or so. And depending on the choices you make, why you could gain points or you could even lose points. And by the time we're done with this challenge, you'll have an idea of how tough it was, how challenging it really was to journey to California during the gold rush. So here we go. The year is 1850, two years into the California gold rush. And we are gonna start in New York City, a big city on the east side of the United States. Now, whether you're gold miners from the United States, or maybe you immigrated here from another country, you ended up in New York City. And that's where you heard about the California gold rush. But not just about the California gold rush, you heard about the little town of Columbia, where there's supposedly so much gold sitting around here that you can just walk around and scoop giant gold nuggets off the ground and get super rich. So you decided that you're gonna test your luck and see if you can journey to California to strike it rich. But we have a long and dangerous journey ahead of us, friends. And what we're gonna look at first is the two main ways you could have gotten to California. And one of the first ways, oh, that's the overland route, where you'd need a wagon like this. And that overland journey, is a 2,000 mile long journey that'll take you three to six months, which is why you'd need a big wagon like this. Uh, yours would be covered, of course. And that three to six months when we take that journey, why we would journey across mountains, through the Great Plains, over some more mountains, through a desert, and then guess what? More mountains. You have to cross a lot of mountains than the overland route. And I should point out that uh, this seat right here in this wagon, well, it sure looks nice, but you wouldn't have a seat in your wagon because seats take up precious cargo space that you could use to store more food and water for your journey. So the overland journey, our gold miners, they walked that 2000 miles to California. I'm going to show you all the other route now. And for that one, I have to share my screen because that is the oversea route where you would sail to California. And I have to show you a picture because I don't have a ship in my park. All right, these are the two main routes that they had. This is a nice little picture of the wagons on the overland route. And this right here, it's one of the old ships that our miners would use to sail to California. Now, the overland route of these two ways is faster, but it's a lot more expensive. It's about $250 in their time, which is around $8,000 today. And the overseas route was a lot cheaper, only 100 bucks, which is about 3400 a day. But sailing to California took a lot longer because you had to sail around Cape Horn, around the tip of South America for our European gold miners. So that was a 16,000 mile journey. If you came from the United States, it's probably closer to 12,000, but it could still take you between four to eight months. And this route, it has some pretty big dangers. The main one was right here, going around Cape Horn, around the tip of South America. See, South America is very close to Antarctica, and that cold air makes for crazy winds and waves. And you also have to deal with the occasional iceberg. So it can be pretty dangerous. And this right here is a map of the overland route to kind of give you an idea of how much of the United States that we're gonna be crossing. And for our challenge today, why well, it's a lot safer if we all journey together to California. There's some safety in numbers and 
Well, I don't know about you, but the overseas route doesn't sound like fun. You also probably be seasick for that four to eight months. So I think we should take the overland route. So that's what we're going to do today, friends. We're going to journey to California overland. So we journeyed to the frontier town of Independence, Missouri. And that's where we're going to buy our supplies to journey to California. And what you discover when you make it to Independence, Missouri, is that kind of like today where we have cars of all different shapes and sizes, they had wagons of different shapes and sizes. And we have a choice to make, friends. We have to pick out what wagon we want to take to California. And I'm going to show you now a picture of two of the main wagons that you had. Here's the first one right here. This is a big wagon called a Conestoga wagon. And this thing's just huge. Well, when you look at it, you think this thing is big enough that I might be able to hold enough supplies to get me straight to California without having to stop and resupply. But then you think it's really big. So it could get stuck going over rough terrain or even in the mud. So as you think about that, if you want to buy this big Conestoga wagon, you discover that there's a smaller wagon called a prairie schooner. And this one, why it's smaller and lighter, so it's not going to get stuck going over rough terrain or going through the mud. But it is a little smaller, so you may have to stop and resupply along the way to California. So this is your first choice, friends. You need to pick out if you want to take the small prairie schooner or the large Conestoga wagon. And I will give you all about 20 seconds to think about that. And then you can write down what wagon you picked on your paper. And then we're going to set out to California. And five, four, three, two, and one. All right, friends. We have our wagons. They're all filled with supplies. And we even have the animals to pull them. And I bet we're ready to finally journey to California. So we set out from the frontier town of Independence, Missouri. And we encounter our first challenge. Oh, and I almost forgot to tell you what month of the year you're leaving. We are going to be leaving in May of 1850. So we left in May. And we come to our first challenge, which is a river. We have to cross this big river. Now, when we come to this river, it, we recently had a rainstorm here. So... It's pretty muddy looking. And we can't really see the bottom of the river, but we think maybe we could try to risk crossing this river. Like you see these people doing in their wagons. And it kind of look like this. You're just going to drive your wagon through the river and hope it's not too deep that your wagon will sink. Which means it is kind of risky. So as you think about that, if you want to take the risk crossing this muddy looking river, you realize that just down river a bit, there's a man operating a ferry. And you go up and talk to him and he tells you why I'd be more than happy to take your wagon and your animals across on my ferry. But, well, it's been raining, so it's a little wet outside. And I think I'm gonna charge you more money because it's been raining. I'm gonna charge you $5 to take you across the river. $5 may not sound like a whole lot now, but back then, that was a lot of money. That's almost like $175 today. So this is your first challenge, friends. Are you going to pay the ferryman to take you across? Or are you going to risk crossing this river for free? And I'm going to give you all 20 seconds to think about that. And I want you to write down your answer.
and five, four, three, two, and one. So what I would like you to do now is you can turn to your neighbor and I want you to quietly tell them what you picked. Did you pick to risk crossing that river for free or are you going to pay the ferryman? And I want you to tell your friend why you made that choice. And I'll give y'all another 20 seconds or so to go ahead and do that. All right, five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, friends, I'm going to give you the results now of challenge number one. So, if you decided to risk crossing this river, you tried to risk crossing this river for free, I have bad news for you. You see, you start crossing this river, but that rain made it really muddy. So you couldn't see how deep it was. And you discover how deep it is when you get to the middle and your wagon goes boop, right into the water. And the current starts washing away some of your supplies. Thankfully, a bunch of us are still here and we're able to help you pull your wagon out of the water. But you lost a lot of your supplies and you also lose two points. So if you tried to cross the river, you need to subtract two points from your score, and you should have a total of eight points now. Now, for those of you that paid the ferryman, if you decided to pay the ferryman that $5 to take you across, I have. Good news for you. Sure, it was expensive, but the ferryman loads your wagon and your animals up, and he safely takes you across this river. And you gain two points. So if you paid the ferryman to take you across the river, I want you to add two points to your score. And you should have a total of 12 points now. And now we journey forward. It is now late May, maybe early June, when we come to our next challenge. And our next challenge is to decide what trail we want to take to get to California. Because there's two different trails we can take now. And give me just a second. I'm going to bring up my screen to show you the two trails because what we come to for this choice is a fork in the road. And here are the two trails at this fork. The first one is the California Trail. The second is the Gila Trail. And your trail guide tells you that, well, the California Trail, you would go north. So we're gonna go up through Nebraska, across Wyoming, down through Utah, and then through a desert in Nevada, before we finally cross the Sierra Nevada mountains. And he tells you that the California Trail, why it's not the best idea to start that trail in fall or winter. Because Wyoming's known to get blizzards. It snows sideways there sometimes. And then he tells you about the other trail, the Gila Trail. It does kind of look a little bit like Gila, but it is pronounced Gila. And instead of going up, why, we go down through Oklahoma, across Texas, through New Mexico, around the Sierra Nevada mountains in Southern California, where we would journey north through California's Central Valley to get to the gold fields. And your trail guide tells you that the Gila Trail, it's not the best idea to take it starting in the spring or the summer because Texas and New Mexico can get pretty hot in the summertime. And that heat, well, that's not good for you or your animals. So this is your next challenge, friends. Do you want to take the California Trail or do you want to take the Gila Trail? And I'm going to give you all 20 seconds to think about that. And I want you to write down your decision. And. 
and five, four, three, two, and one. All right, what I want y'all to do now is you can turn to your friend and I want you to quietly tell them what you picked and why you picked it. All right, friends. I'm going to give you the results now of challenge a number two. Now, for this challenge, if you picked the California Trail, so if you decided to go north, I have. Good news for you. You see, you start the California Trail in late May, early June, which puts you crossing through that area in the middle of summer. And sure, it's warm, but it's not as bad as going south. And you're able to quickly make it through. And you're a lot closer to California now. And you gain two points. So if you picked the California Trail, I want you to add two points to your score. Now, if you picked the Gila Trail, so you decided to go south, I have bad news for you. Instead of going north, you decided to go south through Oklahoma and across Texas. But you started that trail in late May, early June. So as you start getting closer to California, well, spring turns to summer and it gets really, really hot. And you have to slow your pace down a lot. And it takes you a whole lot longer to get to California. And you lose two points. So if you picked the Gila Trail, I want you to subtract two points from your score. And now we journey forward. And for this challenge, why? We're going to come to an oasis right before a desert. I'm going to show you all a picture of this lovely little oasis. And it's now probably, oh, late June or so. I'm gonna show y'all a picture right here. Here's our oasis right before the desert. And you can even see the Sierra Nevada mountains in the distance. We're almost there, friends. We're almost to California. And as you just stop and take in all this beautiful scenery here, the nice green grass, this pretty little freshwater lake. You're just taking it all in. And then you notice your trail guide seems a little nervous. So you walk up and ask your trail guide, well, what seems to be the matter? And your trail guide tells you, oh, it's nothing. We just have a, a small desert that we have to cross through before we get to California. So knowing that you're about to cross through a desert, you're faced with two choices. Your first choice is why you could spend the day gathering supplies. You could see if there's any wild growing vegetables in that grass. You could go fishing in the lake or even refill your water. Or you could spend the day resting. We have been journeying for nearly two months now. It's been a long, tiring road. And why? Just resting and relaxing for a day, taking in all the beautiful sceneries. Well, that sounds pretty nice. So those are your two choices. Are you going to spend the day gathering supplies? Or are you going to spend the day resting? And I'm going to give you all 20 seconds to think about that. And I want you to write down your decision. And five, four, three, two, and one. All right, friends, just like the last two times, I want you to uh, turn to your neighbor and quietly tell them what you picked 
and why you picked it. Did you pick to resupply or did you pick to rest? And I'll give you all a few seconds to go ahead and do that. And five, four, three, two, and one. All right, friends. I'm sure we all had some pretty good reasons for our choices. But I'm going to give you the results now of challenge at number three. And this challenge, why... It actually depends on what wagon you picked at the start. Because if you picked that large Conestoga wagon, why, well, it doesn't really matter which one you chose because your wagon is already large enough to make it to California without needing to stop. So if you had the Conestoga wagon, that big wagon, I want you to add two points to your score. So those of you that picked the large Conestoga wagon, can add two points to your score. And then I want you to not add any more points when I give the results to our small wagon users. You only get those two. Now, for our small wagon users, if you picked that little prairie schooner, your choice did matter. Because if you picked to rest with that small wagon, I have bad news for you. You see, your wagon was small and you were starting to run low on supplies. And instead of gathering supplies, you spent the day resting and you are not prepared for this 80 mile desert we're about to cross. So small wagon users that chose to rest lose two points. If you had a small wagon and you chose to rest, you need to subtract two points from your score. Now, if you had the small wagon and you chose to resupply for that choice, I have. <laughs> Good news for you. You recognized you were running low on supplies, so you decided to spend the day gathering more supplies. You could refill your water, go fishing, or even look for vegetables in the grass. But you are now prepared for the 80 mile desert we're about to cross, and you gain two points. So if you had that small wagon and you chose to resupply, I want you to add two points to your score. And now we journey forward. And it is now early July. And we're probably thinking that uh, we didn't maybe pick the best time of year to leave because you know where we are now? We are right in the middle of this 80 mile desert. It is hot in a desert in July. But thankfully, a strange little rainstorm pops up. And we get a bunch of rain that just falls everywhere and it feels nice, cools you down. And then we keep journeying and then our trail guide stops and he points out some strange looking ground in the desert here. I'm gonna show you all a picture of this strange looking ground. So he calls everybody forward and points out this ground. And this is what it looks like friends. He's a little concerned about it because when he looks at this funny looking ground here, he does see a small path that you could try to take through and avoid most of this funny looking ground, but it is a really tiny path. So he tells you, if you don't want to take this small path, then we can go around this area with this strange looking ground, but it might add another day or two to our trip. That's another day spent in this gross, hot desert. So we're faced with two choices on how to deal with this strange looking ground here. Our first choice is why we can take a risk and try to follow this little narrow path through the funny looking ground. Or we can add a day to our trip and go around. 
So I'm going to give you all 20 seconds to think about that. Are you going to follow the narrow path through the strange looking ground? Or are you going to go around and add another day to your trip? And after you make your decision, I want you to write down your answer. And five, four, three, two, and one. So just like the other three times, I want you to quietly turn to your neighbor and tell them what you picked and why you picked it. Did you pick to risk going through the strange looking ground, following that narrow trail? Or are you going to go around and add a day to your trip? All right, friends, I'm sure you're ready now for the results of challenge number four. And for this challenge, why, it also depends on what wagon you picked back at the start. Because if you had the small wagon, it doesn't matter if you wanted to go around or follow the narrow path because your wagon is small enough to follow this narrow path through the strange looking ground. So I want all of my small wagon users, regardless of what choice you made, to add two points to your score. So if you had the small wagon, you get to add two points to your score. And you're only going to get two points. You don't get to add any more when I tell the large wagon users the results of their choice. Now, for my large wagon users, your choice did matter. Because if you tried to follow the narrow path, you took the risk to follow the narrow path through the strange looking ground. For my large wagon users, I have some bad news for you. You see, your wagon was too big to stay on this narrow path. And then it slips in to the quicksand and it starts sinking down and it takes you hours to pull your wagon out and the wheel is badly damaged and you have to spend a day fixing it. So my large wagon users that took the risk to go through, you lose two points. So large wagon users that tried to risk going through the narrow path through the quicksand have to subtract two points from their score. Now for the large wagon users that decided to go around, you felt it was too risky, for you, I have. Good news. You didn't want to take the risk and that path looked way too small for your huge wagon. So you felt it was safer to go around and add a day. It may have added a day, but you safely make it through this desert and gain two points. So large wagon users that decided to go around, I want you to add two points to your score. And now we journey forward. And it is now time for our fifth and final challenge. And for this challenge, well, now we're actually pretty happy that we left when we did because we crossed the Sierra Nevada mountains in late July. There's no snow, so we're not gonna get stuck like the Donner Party did. And as we come down the mountains and on the Western side, where all the gold is, why we're nearing Columbia, friends. We're almost there. We got another week's journey ahead of us. And then we'll have made it to Columbia here and we can start gold mining. But our final challenge appears. It jumps in front of us on a trail and it startles you. I'm gonna show you all a picture of your fifth and final challenge. So what jumps in front of you on the trail? A mountain lion jumps in front of the wagons. And maybe 
your first thought is to grab your rifle. And if you do, you aim it and you pull the trigger and all you hear is click. And then you remember, we just went through a rainstorm in the mountains. That's pretty common. But you forgot to cover your black powder. So all your black powder is soaking wet, which means your gun's useless. And we're stuck with two choices. Our first choice is we could try to run from the mountain lion. We can hope that we're faster than it and that maybe we can circle back around later and gather our wagon and supplies. Or we could stand our ground. We could make ourselves look bigger and we can shout at it and hope to scare it away. So those are your two choices. Are you going to run from the mountain lion or are you going to stand your ground? And I'm going to give you all 20 seconds to think about that. And then I want you to write down your decision. And five, four, three, two, and one. And just like the other four times, I want you to turn to your friend and I want you to quietly tell them what you picked and why you picked it. Did you decide that you wanted to try to run from the mountain lion or are you gonna stand your ground? And I will give you all a few more seconds to think about that. All right, friends. It is now time for the results of the fifth and final challenge. So, if you decided that you wanted to try to run from the mountain lion, you trying to run from that mountain lion, I have very bad news for you. You see, mountain lions are predators, and when they see you run, they think you're their prey, so it would chase after you and pounce on you. And thankfully, well, we have enough of our friends here that they're able to scare it off, but you're pretty badly hurt, and you have to spend some time bandaging up your wounds, and you lose four points. If you tried to run from the mountain lion, you need to subtract four points from your score. Now, for those of you that stood your ground, for that choice, I have. Good news for you. You decided that you were going to stand your ground and make yourself look bigger and try to scare the mountain lion. Guess what? It works. Since the mountain lion's a predator, and it thinks you're way more trouble than you're worth when you look bigger, and it takes off running, and you safely survive and gain two points. So if you stood your ground and made yourself look bigger, I want you to add two points to your score. And I put this last challenge in because we do have mountain lions here in Colombia and all through California. And if you ever see a mountain lion in the wild, you should never run from it. You should always stand your ground and make yourself look bigger. And now I want everybody to add up their final scores. And I'll give you all 10 seconds to do that. I'm going to tell you what all these scores mean. All right, friends, we're going to start with the lowest set of scores that you could get in this challenge. And that's if you scored between zero and four points. If you scored between zero and four points, your gold miner unfortunately succumbed to the dangers of this trail and they didn't make it to California. Like many gold miners that took the overland route, not all of them made it. Many people died on this very dangerous journey to California. Now, if you scored between five and 10 points, between five and 10 points, you made it to California, but just barely. And with just enough supplies left over that when you sell them, why, you can afford a small tent that maybe has a few holes in it 
and a little gold pan. And while it may not be much, you are here in California. You made it, and you're ready to reclaim your fortune in gold. Now, if you scored between 11 and 16 points, if you scored between 11 and 16 points, you made it to California in good condition and with enough supplies left over that you're able to afford a nice tent and a handful of mining supplies and you're ready to reclaim your fortune in gold. Now, if you scored between 17 and 20 points, between 17 and 20 points, you made it to California in such good condition, you somehow managed to get extra supplies. Like, I think you might be a trail guide yourself. And when you sell these extra supplies, you have enough money that you could afford to buy a house or start your own gold mining company. And you are definitely ready to reclaim your fortune in gold. So I hope you all had fun with the Go S challenge here today. And before I let everybody go, I do want to encourage you, if you are ever able to, to come and explore this old gold mining town, to make the trip here to Columbia State Historic Park and explore this town for yourself. But I understand if you're not able to, but we're pretty fortunate if you live here in California, we have 280 state parks here. And these parks, they're meant for you. And I want to encourage you to go out and explore everything that California has to offer. So I want to thank everybody again for coming here to the Go West Challenge. And I hope to see you soon here at Columbia State Historic Park. Have a good day, everybody. Bye.